Hey guys, Troy here with Seller.Tools and I'm excited in today's video to talk about a subject I'm very passionate about and that is doing keyword research right. You've no doubt heard a quantity of content on this subject, but what I really want to do is cut through, give you the quality information in terms of what top sellers are doing and how they're leveraging exclusive Seller.Tools feature to simply do this step better. It's so important and so crucial to do this right, to gain visibility, get that market share on Amazon. So with that, let me jump right into the presentation I've got ready for you guys. Now, one of the questions that you should often be asking yourself when it comes to keyword research is what is missing? If you're not gobbling up an abundance of Amazon market share, winning a ton of keywords, you should be constantly asking yourself this question. And of course, there's been plenty of changes, plenty of transitions here when it comes to the availability of data to inform some of your decisions with it com when it comes to keyword research. And that really should allow us to reinforce that Amazon data is still king. Again, with search volume changes and now brain analytics being readily available through, uh, through Amazon, through Seller Central, through select tools like seller.tools, it's a really important to remind ourselves of that preeminency of any challenge or opportunity to uh, sort of compromise the, uh, the power of the data that we utilize in our business because Amazon data still reigns supreme. It should inform what we're doing. And I'm going to touch on an exclusive feature a little bit later that really reinforces this point. So one of the things that we're starting to see with a lot of these changes is really a lot of the same keyword research methods that we were using three and even four years ago. And what we're seeing is this old method really becoming new again. We're sort of putting lipstick on that pig of just, hey, this is now without search volume, this is the approach to keyword research. And it really can lend to a lack of sophistication or really what top sellers are doing to make sure they, they complete this step right. And so this old becoming new again is something you should be aware of and be careful of when you approach your keyword research. Now, what this can often look like is, uh, is really a focus quite honestly, on density. Density with the select number of information or data sources. So reverse ASIN is a tried and true tool, means of capturing keywords that uh, a competitor or a set of competitors are ranking for. No doubt some power in that data and insight, but inherently incomplete, it's not enough. So if we put that data into our keyword tracker or effectively our funnel, we leverage data like Amazon suggested, again, same uh, information readily available to us three, four years ago, the question we can ask ourselves is, are, are we done? Is this a really enough keyword data insight for us to uh, really finalize our keyword research? Or there's really a more unique, nuanced, sophisticated approach that we can tackle to make sure that our keyword data set, keyword manager is more built out and we're inf more informed through a more robust keyword data set. And the way that we can do that instead of two data sources, is effectively 3x, is, is look at as many as seven different data sources that really could just come to mind for me in terms of this presentation when it comes to reverse ASIN, Amazon suggested PPC, sure, throw those in, that's great. But we can also use pay to play insights from search term reports. We can use a seed, use a seed keyword discovery tool like Last Search, which taps into billions of keywords, so we're, uh, we're not uh, compromising the amount of data that we can get. Manual inputs, if there's other sources of arriving at keywords, automatic keyword harvesting, uh, Solo.Tools exclusive feature there for us to continually be capturing, providing, and harvesting keywords for you. And then of course, brain analytics. Now that that's kind of at the top of the heap, it's a question of, are you utilizing the best source of data? Um, it, it can be often a question of what level of, not if you're compromising or not, but what level of compromise if you're not using brain analytics in your keyword research. Crucial point there is that's right now really at the top of the heap. And now instead of a question of if we're done, there's a finality to this. This really looks complete because our keyword data set is just very rich. It's from a, very, a variety of sources. There is not any challenges, shortcomings, or issues because we're just taking everything in. Our funnel is widened and our keyword manager is really built out. So this really should give us confidence with what we wanna do with those keywords now that we've gathered them. So one of the important and key takeaways, especially from this presentation, is the idea that density does not equal priority. This old becoming new approach of really focusing on a select few data sources and then layering over the top the, uh, the data that arrives out of those, of those data sources, it gives you a picture of density, which is great. That can be a part of your keyword research, but it is inherently incomplete because one of the focus, one of the key pieces of conducting keyword research is 
prioritization. What we know now in terms of optimization is that there is a weighting to listing elements. So things like titles and subject matters and where they should get greater priority. If we're focusing on density, the question then becomes, okay, we run, we run our prior funnel with two data sources. What do we do with that data? How, how do we be informed about it even though we already understand the shortcoming of the, the, uh, the only few data sources, it still arrives at the same, the same really challenge of what do I do with this data? It it's, gives me a really great red ocean, as I'll allude to a little bit for, uh, before, uh, excuse me, after, where we're all really chasing after the same keywords because we're running these same steps. This is really uh, lending itself somewhat to a herd mentality. And that's why this content is so important is that you can cut through by virtue of deviating off the same path and not really following the herd and addressing this shortcoming of that density, really not informing our prioritization or what do we do with those keywords once we get them. And so this blue ocean or, or red ocean really analogy is very fitting, is that we have a lot of folks going after the same keywords, running the same steps that are only from a few data sources and really lacking the visibility of prioritization. So there's this arbitrary use of these keywords and this red ocean uh, sort of uh, creates itself where a lot of sellers are going to the same place, working with the same keywords and not really adding any sophistication to this step. Where the blue ocean really uh, opens itself up is taking in the additional uh, data sets, data sources, and being informed with prioritization, leveraging our know-how, upping our optimization game, not completing the same steps as everybody else and expecting different results. We know that of course is the definition of insanity, uh, somewhat fitting here, but really what's important is, are you going where the opportunity is? Are you really adding a sophistication or nuance to your keyword research to do it better than the next guy at the very least? Do you at least wanna do it better than the next guy and then graduate to that top seller status and really crush it with visibility on Amazon. So I love this little graphic because it kind of plays to the idea of running a reverse ASIN where your competitors could be nameless, faceless, and really you don't know what they're ranking for is what they're ranking for. Are they doing a good job? You don't know. Are they doing a bad job? You don't know. But are you going off of the quantity of keywords that they have? Does that inform the quality of keywords? You really don't know. And so we're introducing all these questions by virtue of the lack of data sources and really not being intentional about our keyword research. So I love this surfing green guy that's on his way to the top because um, you know he's, he's sort of, he sort of doesn't care. And I think I have the right quantity here. Do I have about the same number of data sources in our more sophisticated approach? Close, close. So if we're looking at like seven different inputs, um, we're, we're effectively addressing that shortcoming and uh, we can surf on our way right up the, uh, right up the, uh, the, green, the green arrow there. So let's walk through a practical example to drive this point home. So a scenario where uh, we may be selling a garlic press, uh, <laughs> a funny uh, product in our space, if nothing else, and we wanna win the keyword garlic press. So let's walk through this scenario with this old being new approach and really adding in uh, some of the sophistication with a secondary approach. So we run through our paces here of reverse ASIN, Amazon suggested PPC, feels like it's four years ago, we've, we've got 500 keywords, uh, which is cool. This could be a really good foundation, uh, incomplete. It's sort of, sort of obvious now at this point that this doesn't give us enough to operate off of because here's what we're looking at. With 500 keywords, very dense. It's red, red, red. We know that this is really where everybody's going and we're, uh, we're just fingers crossed. Maybe we're gonna do something different. Maybe we'll perform better, but it's problematic from the jump. There's too few keywords to truly optimize. So we know through different listing elements, as an example, you've got subject matter at 250, you've got title, you've got you know all these important uh, listing elements. And already we only have 500 keywords to utilize. We're, we're under utilizing keywords by virtue of the lack of data that we are leveraging. And then of course, how do you prioritize these keywords? We know that they're red. We know everybody's going after them, which is cool. Um, but how do we prioritize these in our business to win both the organic and paid set of our business? So that question should be lingering. What do I do with this, this keyword? How, how can I inform my decision as part of next steps? Now, the way that we can add in some sophistication, leverage our know-how now with respect to optimization and doing keyword research right is our really our evolved approach is taking in yes those two different data sources but let's throw five more in there just so we have uh, the quantity of insight uh, there's nothing that we're we don't know we don't know because we're taking in all these data all this data all these inputs and hopefully if you're using uh, seller dot tools through a feature like the keyword processor you only make that decision once once you deem a word or phrase as relevant 
Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, again, you see through our results, we've got 5,000 keywords. You're never making the same decision twice. So you're saving time by doing more than everybody else, which is really, uh, really to the point. So we've got pay to play insights, we've got keyword discovery, we've got automatic keyword harvesting doing work for us, saving us time, we've got brand analytics. So we're not uh, compromising by not using the best data in our keyword research, big shortcoming there that we have to mitigate. And we've got 5,000 keywords, literally 10x the results um, already on the face of it. And yes, we're probably gonna have 10x results once we do the next steps. But the point is being made here that more data, more insight, it plucks ignorance out of the equation and, and empowers us to make the best decisions with the keyword research. So with our 5,000 keywords, we've got tons of blue ocean potential. We've only got to process this data once through using the keyword processor, never making that same decision twice. And again, we can sort by TSI plus to find priority. I should have bolded that as such a key and crucial piece because now we're starting to question, answer the question of what do I do with this keyword? This is the big lingering question that that density approach really throws at us every single time we attempt to do uh, keyword research. And this approach, again, mitigates every single density shortcoming you can imagine. That density-centric, old becoming new approach really is problematic. So I want you and encourage you, if not through Seller Tools, is understanding this approach, these insights, to make sure that you round out, you complete your keyword research so you can really uh, approach it as a top seller would to get that visibility. So. Again, with those 5,000 keywords, we're more informed. There's more that we can do with this information, and we're gonna leverage uh, features aplenty to save us time and to get us visible. So again, question always being what to do with this keyword, what I do with this keyword, and I've shown my hand a little bit. As I alluded to before, TSI Plus is the way that we use Amazon data to prioritize keywords, and that answers that question. What do I do with this keyword? So TSI Plus is a one to 10 scale in Am or excuse me, in seller.tools driven by Amazon data that allows you to prioritize keywords. And the way that it does this, the way that TSI Plus informs our decisions, it, it provides a convergence of relevancy and volume to arrive at that 10 point scale. So as a matter of fact, you're looking for higher TSI Plus keywords. Those are what you wanna prioritize and put into your higher, higher weighted listing elements. So let me take you through just kind of a quick and easy example to showcase what we can do with TSI Plus. So this is my keyword manager in my seller.tools sample account here for a product that I'm managing. It is a foam roller. And I've already got a few keywords added in here. I've been kind of playing around a little bit and I've actually already sorted by TSI Plus. One thing to keep in mind, if you're already a seller.tools user, you're already accustomed to the idea of, of assigning a master keyword. It's effectively your main keyword. A garlic press is a garlic press, a foam roller is a foam roller and so on. So this is identified here as the first keyword in my keyword manager. So of course, TSI plus is typically very high for your main keyword because it is uh, both relevance and a fair degree of volume for your product. Now let's tackle some examples where this can be problematic if you attempt a density centric approach, because typically what you'll do is you'll take historical search volume and you'll say, okay, that will define my uh, define my prioritization for this keyword. But I threw in a few junk but highly visible keywords to kind of make this point where TSI Plus doesn't have that shortcoming, doesn't leave you with more questions to answer, but allows you to rely on Amazon data to drive keyword prioritization. So as an example here, coffee is another keyword I starred here. So of course, as, um, as you'll see here, all keywords that are starred get locked to the top of your keyword manager. But what you'll notice is that with more than, well more than a quarter million exact impressions, half a million competitors, 16 million broad impressions, this is a highly visible, highly sought after keyword, which is really, uh, really telling. But what you'll notice is TSI plus is only four. Um, and where search volume would tell you, oh, well, just prioritize this keyword because it high, has a higher search volume. Uh, if you take that density approach, the TSI plus allows you to say, hey, well, yeah, of course the volume is there, but the relevance is lacking to my product, to a foam roller. And few of these other junk keywords make this same point and same example where, yeah, they're, they're trying to butt up a little bit on TSI plus because they're throwing so much volume. There's so much volume against these keywords, but the relevancy is lacking so as to leave them way down our 10 point scale. Because what you'll notice if I scroll down here a little bit, some of the other keywords that aren't starred but are applicable and were actually part of my keyword research, they start ticking up with TSI Plus, even at such a low volume because relevancy comes in, swoops that keyword back up and says, hey, 
This on a 10 point scale is a keyword that you should treat accordingly. And that prioritization, prioritization and that relative measure across a slew of, again, let's say it's 5,000 keywords, gives you insight and forms decisions where you place those keywords organically, how you leverage them through PPC and so on. And so when we have that question of what do I do with this keyword or am I doing an old now new method of uh, density centric approach is welcome more input, leverage TSI plus and make sure Amazon data is at the forefront of what you're doing, whether it's brand analytics in the discovery phase or whether that's prioritization through TSI plus Amazon data should be crucial and key when you're doing keyword research. I can tell you top sellers know this, they utilize this, they leverage it. And to a degree, they're great. They're happy that there's an abundance of content out there that really doesn't touch on this because that leaves a margin of room for them to exploit these insights of keyword prioritization, taking in so many inputs, managing so many keywords, because there's almost a beauty to the simplicity. It's, it's almost easy to overlook the power because just by virtue of sorting, I know what to do with my keywords. I know where to place them and how to leverage them in my business. And it's just one or two clicks away. So it's simplicity can often have, uh, make you overlook the power and the utility of it in your business. So with that guys, wanted to walk you through a practical example. Now you can see in terms of the advanced keyword strategy methods, they don't have to be difficult or crazy or over the top. It can just be leveraging Amazon data, taking in all your keywords into your keyword manager, sorting by TSI and letting that inform your decision. So there's no compromise, no shortcomings that we've touched on uh, previously, and you can really win the visibility game on Amazon. So with that, drop some comments for me. Let me know if you have any questions with this approach, but I would recommend you use TSI plus in your business now to do keyword research like the experts.